no year before. And we were staying in a cabin in Cherokee. And when you walk out, you look up and there's a highway right above, <laughs> right above up on the hill up there. And, and Teresa says, well, at least there's guardrails. I said, that's not guardrails. <laughs> she says, well, it looks like guardrails. And that's not guardrails. <laughs> there's nothing <laughs> to hold that car up there. So um, if you hear screeching tires, run. Right. Exactly. Yeah. When I lived in Tennessee, there was um, people that run off the side of those mountains and cliffs and stuff all the time. And uh, when I was in EMS there, I can't tell you how many cars we've drug up out of the gullies down there, you know, that might have a hundred foot drop. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's whenever you hang on to the steering wheel and hold the brake and <laughs> pray. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Till it Absolutely. stops. You know, hope that it's uh, not worse when it gets to the bottom. True. I mean, we have a car here. Do you see the pictures I posted on Facebook? I mean, I live on a dirt road and there's woods either side. And there's, I'd say, maybe a 25-foot, hmm. 30-foot drop-off. I'm leaving the road and I look down and there's a car. I've seen that. It's did in the club. There is no. How did that car get in there? It couldn't have drove straight because uh, there's trees behind it. There's trees right. in front of it. The whole hood is smashed in. The windshield smashed in. But how did it get there? A helicopter drop it from the sky? I don't is, know. <laughs> is there a way of maybe it could have rolled, you know, end, end over end or sideways? And rolled down the hill or something? Maybe it rolled sideways down the hill? Uh, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. Wow. So how did they get it out? They didn't. It's still there. <laughs> the sheriff came, and I, I don't know how the heck he got down there. Um, because there's a little uh, creek on one side of it. Uh, but to determine there's no body in there, that was their thing. Um, but it's still there. I don't know how they're ever going to get it out. Uh, just let the <laughs> just let the weeds grow over it. <laughs> Nobody yeah. will ever know. Yeah, that's right. It'll be um, a home to some critter. <laughs> right. It'll be a good good snake station for the winter for the summer. Because I didn't want no dead body. I don't need no more spirits, you know, up in here. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not laughing because somebody could have died. But that, no. I mean, that would be weird. You know, you yeah, standing I... on the front front porch and some dude jumps up from the thing there and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, because I can see it from my front deck. I could see the car down there, and I'm like, oh, dear Lord, thank God no one was killed. That's all I keep saying. Right. That's amazing. So, um, so how, has, um, how has everything been with you after um, your, your medical issue that you had? I mean, is everything better now, or? Yeah, you know me, I keep going from one crisis to the next. <laughs> it's just like, I hope I found that gypsy. I must have pissed off some gypsy somewhere and she put a curse on me. The evil eye. <laughs> right? Or the Stephen King book, Thinner. Why couldn't that have been my curse? <laughs> oh, no, that they got really thin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be that thin. Concentration camp kind of thin. No. Right. No. no, but yeah, the MRSA went away and then it came back and then they put me on more mega antibiotics and now it seems to have gone away. So I'm just holding my breath for the next thing. I got you. Hmm. Well, um, but other than I that, I ain't been doing much. <laughs> Well, we've been trying to get through the holidays, and we have some events coming up. I haven't even told my team yet. Uh, Miss Vera's in the chat room. I, uh, January, we'll be doing an investigation of a um, uh, a battlefield, and um, a Civil War battlefield. Oh, cool. 
and uh, we have um, a hundred year old manor to investigate. Actually, it's more than a hundred year old. Um, it's uh, Columbia Manor, and um, we have several private residents that uh, we just acquired. And, uh, you know, we have this one person that wants us to just come clean their house. And uh, we're, you know, we're going to go do that. But um, <laughs> Ms. Vera posted, I'm listening. <laughs> so, uh, um, but in June, we're going to be in Wilmington. Oh, really? Yes, June 15th, we'll be investigating the USS North Carolina battleship. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so if you hit I-40 and go, <laughs> go east, you know, come join us. I uh, might just do that. You'd be careful who you're issuing an invitation to. <laughs> hey. Oh, and uh, that that's the only thing I require. Just let me know. And uh, we'll have to vote. As soon as the the last group leaves, which I think 8.30 or something like that, we'll set up and uh, we'll be there till 7.30 the next morning. And, oh, that's so neat. And then we're going to go to the motel room and pass out, that type of thing. And we're going to visit Fort Fisher. I spoke to the curator there. We have to do it in the daytime. And as long as we don't carry a metal detector, we uh, we can investigate. Um, of course, we don't want to go to Fort Fisher with a metal detector. It might set off some of those cannonballs that never exploded. There you go. Why yeah, would you go with one anyway? Well, that's true. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't want dead relics. I mean, you know, yeah. those things carry energy. And uh, I learned my lesson about gathering relics but um yeah so that you know that's good that's going to be fun we're also going to go over to fort anderson while we're there and uh to the church that's there the church is burned out but um there's a whole lot of energy there and there's um a, been a, a spirit seen in the church and the old saying is that he's in there looking for the gold that was buried in the altar oh first uh, you know, you kind of often stop and wonder, why did they bury gold in the altar? Right. <laughs> you know. And so, why is uh, he looking for gold where he is? He can't spend it. Exactly. You know. That's, <laughs> that's, why would they put gold in an altar? Yeah. Why would they? So mm. that's something that you know. Of course, I grew up right down the road from there. So, uh, and I never really paid that much attention to it. Until I became a paranormal investigator. And I've always wanted to go find out. Why did they put the gold in there? <laughs> if in fact they did. And. You know. I'd, I'd like to experience. Maybe get some EVPs. And you know. I think I would be okay. If a spirit walked up behind me. And just put his arm around me. Like he's my buddy. And said hey how you doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um. I think I could probably handle that. So I'm waiting for something like that to happen. And um, if I've got to wait till I'm, if, I, if I've got to be a paranormal investigator for 150 years to get that, then I'm going to try. No, oh, there you go. Because <laughs> so, I think that would be the, the biggest, the, the, that would be great. It really would. And uh, as long as, uh, they don't have horns and eyeballs hanging out their sockets and stuff like that. You know, I don't think it or would bother Or a goat me. head. Or a goat head, right. Yeah. 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 And But if you're with Zach Baggins, most likely you'll run into a goat head. <laughs> yes, or uh, another <laughs> group we know. Um, That's so, right. Uh, <laughs> we think there's a demon at every corner. Right. Yeah. And, you know... Uh, <laughs> All the time that I've been, I've had to deal with demons. I've seen a lot of things done. I've seen um, how they have affected people in a very, very negative way. 
Mm-hmm. And people cannot tell me and make me believe because I've experienced it firsthand that they can command another demon to make one leave. Right. Not gonna not gonna happen. No. You know, and and just <laughs> not gonna happen and, and there's no way to you know why you're gonna charge ten thousand dollars for some crap like that. That's right. not happening. And um the Satan the end result can't cast out Satan. <laughs> right. The end result, the stuff like that is possession, you know, oppression, possession. Right. Um you know, and, and getting people hurt. And right. innocent people. Innocent people, exactly. Because if you're dumb enough to do that, God forgive me for saying this, but you deserve to be hurt. Smack good and hard. Hey, exactly. You know, maybe, maybe that's an eye opener. Maybe right. that will be your, your chance to turn around and go, pardon the expression, oh, shit, I was wrong. Right. You know, and, and run the other direction. But it's going to happen. I've been there. I've seen it. I experienced it. Thank God I'm out of it. Right. Uh, but I still remember. And, yeah, it's something you never forget. <laughs> you know, people used to tell me, well, some hideous thing, you know, your mind blocks that out and stuff. I've seen a whole bunch of hideous things and my mind never blocked any of it out. It's right there. I remember it like it was yesterday. Right. Um. Honestly. Honestly, I could sometimes I'd have a nightmare and I could literally wake up and smell the same smells than us when I was there. And um, it's not a not a good thing. No. And and sometimes I cringe whenever um, I walk into a place and I don't necessarily feel like it's a demon, but it's something that's negative. Right. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, this feels real similar. You know, I'm going to back out for a minute, you know, <laughs> um, because once you ever feel that and you can say the same thing, Mary, once you ever feel that, you'll yeah. never be the same. No, no, it changes you forever. Yeah. And it really some- does. Yeah, it does. And, and for someone to sit and tell me that, well, oh, if you've got a demon in your house or demon that's within you or whatever um send me ten thousand dollars and a picture of your house and your animals and things like that i'll get rid of it no yeah. not happening there's no, no way no and and you know that they're just going to end up when you summons a demon you have called upon that spirit to you. You have no control over that spirit. None. And and they'll laugh at you. Oh, yeah. So I think that people that are fooling around with things are going to come to a, a real strange realization that um, they uh, really messed up. And, and then who are they going to call? Well, that's true. They're going to, you know, they're going, a lot of them are going to turn around and say, oh, God. Right. Um, and, you know, God is always the fallback on. And people that believe in devil, believe in the devil, believe in Satan, has to believe in God. Um, right. They, I mean, they, they go hand in hand. Right. So, you know, the time the, the time they sat back and say, oh, my gosh, I was wrong. A lot of times it's too late. Right. And I think God will allow that. So other people will see this is what happens when you delve into to the things that you can't not to. I told you not to do that. So, right. you know, and us as paranormal investigators, you know, like um, Becky and Will's team and Nathan's team and all, and all these good teams that are around, 